Hi, I'm Paul Battaglia, and I'd like to talk to you about some of the key elements in Chapter 2. Now that students have gone through limits, it's time to move them into derivatives. And a great way to tease this lesson is actually to refer back to the lesson closer after Section 2.7. Now, of course, students can't answer this question just yet, but they will once they've mastered the skills in Chapter 2. So the beginning of the chapter, from about 2.1 through 2.4, covers some basic differentiation rules. Make no mistake, though, these aren't just rote things students should be doing. They're very important rules that students need to know, not just now, but months from now when they take the AP exam. And that will obviously set them up for much more success, and they could talk a little bit more about some of the conceptual things in this unit. So now, what are some of the conceptual things students will be able to handle once they've mastered those rules? Well, then you can talk to them a little bit more about the relationship between position, velocity, acceleration, perhaps the rate at which students are entering an amusement park on a class trip, or even the way water falls from a ceiling after a heavy storm. All these kinds of rates that students will explore really can't be discovered until they understand the basic foundation, and that's where those rules are important. So next we'll move into section 2.5, and 2.5 is closely related to 2.7 because it deals with implicit differentiation. Again, a necessary skill for students to be able to handle those real-life types of problems. The sleeper section of the entire chapter might be 2.6, inverse derivatives and derivatives of inverse trig functions. Why do I call it the sleeper section? Well, really because students tend to look at this section and they, they don't see a lot of it, and it's not heavily tested on the AP exam, but it is there. So I a lot of times have to remind my students, you know what, even though this kind of thing might not be popular, mastery will help you feel a little bit more confident. In fact, my students will come back to me and say, you know what, because I mastered this section, I feel like I have a really well-rounded knowledge of the rules of differentiation and the process of differentiation. So finally, section 2.8 covers Newton's method. And the important note here is that Newton's method is not covered on the AP exam. So if timing doesn't permit it, don't feel obligated to cover it right now. You can always come back to it if you wish after the AP exam. I hope these tips have been helpful. I'm sure you'll find much success in chapter two.